Hi, 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 welcome back to On Track Tips. <laughs> this is Jason Weiser, and you're listening to Get On Track, Stay On Track. And we're just having a blast backstage in the green room with Lisa Engels today. <laughs> okay, let's get this show started. We're talking today about the power of practice. This is part three in our four-part series on Budget Your Life. All right, we talked already about budget your time. We're going to talk about today about budget your fitness. And then next time we're going to talk about budget your finances, time, fitness, and finance. What do these things all have to do with small business? Well, Lisa's going to help us understand a little bit more today as we look at the power of practice. For those of you that don't know who Lisa is, Lisa is a mind-body fitness expert, and she's the head, head running coach over at Silicon Valley Triathlon Club. And she's also an entrepreneur, and most recently, she's an author. She's written an ebook with a guided audio session about running that covers breathing techniques and mindset principles inspired by yoga tradition. She's going to talk with us about how to take the work out of your workout. Diving even a little bit deeper, Lisa teaches people how to use what she calls the power of practice to create radical breakthroughs in their health, their wealth, and their happiness. Lisa is also a host of a very popular Hangout on Air series by the same name, Power of Practice, where she interviews experts. Uh, from a wide range of fields, from health, personal development, business, everything in between. And she asked them one question. She says, what's one practice you can share with our audience that can create a radical breakthrough in your health, your wealth, or your happiness? And you better believe I'm going to be asking Lisa that very question here in a little while. I'm going to turn the tables on her. And uh, something you might not know about Lisa, I just found this out. She's a music lover. She uh, likes to practice. She's practicing the tubla. The tubla is a drum that's used in classical Indian music. Fun stuff. I really appreciate it. Hey, Lisa Engels, guess what? what? Welcome to On Track Tips. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm happy to be here again. <laughs> One-on-one -on -one with you, Jason. This, this is, is awesome. Is awesome. <laughs> okay, so for those of you that uh, are On Track Tips regulars, you know that we love Twitter. And today's Twitter question is, how many times a week do you exercise? Do you exercise? Do you work out? Do you... Uh, do you have some sort of fitness regiment? So just basically go over to Twitter, use the hashtag on track tips, that's pound on track tips, and just let us know how often do you exercise throughout the week. And if you're a new subscriber here, we want to let you know about the big red button. That's really simple. All you do is you head on over to ontracktips.com and you push it. It's kind of like a, an inside joke between some of the subscribers and myself, the big red button. But if you want to find out about it, all you got to do, head on over to OnTrackTips.com. Look for the big red push, big red button and push it, and I'm going to get you in contact with some experts like Guy Kawasaki, Chris Brogan, Andrea Vall, and Lisa Engels. So I think that's enough of the housekeeping for today. Let's, uh, let's get started with this. What do you say? Yeah, let's awesome. do it. So, so what I want to what I want to know first is let's make a connection between fitness and business because I think that fitness is kind of you know not really inside of my niche, mm -hmm. and uh, most people are biz, small business owners. So, what's what's the connection? Why why okay. even talk about fitness? Well, I'll tell you one connection that might nobody might even think of, but for years and years, I would tell my athletes how you show up for your training, how you show up for your racing, because a lot of them are athletes are doing training and racing. Um, but think about this, how you show up for your daily workout is a reflection of how you show up in your business. That means the mindset that you're going into your workout with, the excuses that you come up in your fitness routine with, eh, you know, maybe take a look over at your business and see how you're showing up in your, your fitness routine, how does that reflect how you show up in your business? You probably didn't expect that one, did you, Jason? <laughs> no, no, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, excuses. It's a big one. I think we all have a lot of them, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> in fact, absolutely. I, was, I was talking in the comment stream earlier with David Leopold that, um, uh, th that I w had my own set of excuses. I was doing really good and working out in Florida. I moved to mo northern Michigan, and then all of a sudden I justified somehow getting out of my workout routine. So uh, let, let's, go, let's go to the beginning though. In order to even get into some sort of a workout routine or a fitness or anything like that, so first of all you understand don't, don't have any excuses, right? Well how do, you, how do you avoid the excuses and how do you, one of the words that you used was you need to choose to value your health. So how do I choose to value my health over the excuses? Well first of all I think we need to realize that excuses, what is the deeper underlying cause of your excuses? Most people, what they try to do is they, they realize, oh, I just have an excuse and I just have to do it anyways. The Nike, you know, just do it 
great advice if you don't have any underlying self-sabotaging uh, mental shit going on. But honestly, most of us do. So those excuses are really, at the deeper core of them, have some deeper underlying issue. So in, in other words, to get to it, to just do it, you need to overcome whatever those underlying issues are. So that's probably not the answer again. I'm probably going to be giving you a lot of answers here that you don't expect <laughs> to hear, but that's that's the essence of of the starting point is looking at well why why do I have these excuses and and how are they serving me? All of our excuses serve us in some way or another. They keep us safe. They keep us in a, a, a place where we can be safe and comfortable, so we don't have to push into that place of being uncomfortable. A lot of times people have excuses for not doing fitness routines because honestly they don't like to feel uncomfortable and working your body a little bit feels uncomfortable sometimes when you're not in shape, right? Yeah, well, you know, so so that goes to the whole point of um, like self-help systems and getting motivated and finding something inside you. I mean, we're not all built to be natural runners or I mean, I'm not. I don't I don't particularly care to work out. It's not one of the things that I I mean, it's a chore to me. It's a challenge. It's not something, but I know I need to do it. And so I had to dig in deep, and I had to find something to motivate me to go beyond that. And I'll be glad to share that in a minute. But I want to ask you, why is it that that uh, that self-help programs do do they work? Do they not work? I mean, what what can somebody that typically isn't built to be a natural exercise person, what can they do to dig inside and find an answer? Yeah, well, I think that's an awesome question because a lot of people have that same experience of, okay, self-help, I'm going to do this self-help. First, I would ask, you know, what self-help things are you doing? But in and of itself, we do need to be resourceful in and of ourselves. Ultimately, we are the only ones that can change anything in our body, our health, our life, right? But here's where it becomes so critical to have a coach, in my opinion, because self-help, oftentimes we cannot see our own faults. We cannot see our own blind spots. And it takes the perspective of someone else who can look at what's going on and go, and just shine the light, be a guide and shine the light and go, oh, did you see this over here? This is what's blocking you. When we try to do everything on our own and help ourselves. Um, oftentimes, we're not seeing where what it is that's blocking us because we don't have the perspective. We're in it so much. We're in our own patterns that we can't see it. So that's why self-help often doesn't work, and why it's so critical to get a mentor, a guide, a coach, or someone who can help you through those. That's why people get personal trainers, right, Jason? <laughs> yeah. You don't know what you should be doing. Should you be running on the treadmill? Should you be riding on a bike? Should you be lifting weights or should you be taking a body pump class? Should you do yoga? I don't know. But you know who will know is an expert, a personal trainer. Yeah, I, you said a couple of things there. One of, one of the things that helped me really get into my exercise routine was making that commitment to make an investment in myself. So for myself personally, I'll share this, and, and you tell me if I'm on the right track or, or tell me what you like or don't like about the way I approached it. So first of all, I had to determine what is it inside me that was causing me to not want to exercise. And I realized, like, I just didn't have anything uh, inside me. Work was, to me, more valuable and more enjoyable and more fun, and I love to just sit here. But then my wife comes in, and she's like, you know what? Your kids are going to be, like, 16, and you're going to be fat and lazy, and you're not going to be able to play football with them. My wife can talk to me like that. She can call me fat. That's okay. I give her permission. But but she's got a real point there, right? So I had to, I went, well, hang on a second. She's she's so right. I've got little boys here that are going to want a dad, and it's not fair to them that I can't go outside and play football with them because I'm too fat and old to be. So I had to, I had to put my boys as my motivator to get out there and do my fitness, to stay healthy. You know, they, they, I have a responsibility to my family. So that was my motivator. So then my question was, okay, so how do I get started? Where do I start? And just like in business, you're right. Go and get a coach. Get somebody that knows what they're doing to help you along. Make an investment, right? Be willing. Once you make that investment in yourself, in your business, then, uh, then the same, same coaching advice that I give when people ask me, well, how do you start with outsourcers? You know, how do you start to expand your business and hire outsources? Well, invest. 
invest in them. Invest in a coach. And so one of the things that I did was I walked into my gym and I bought two months worth of personal training. That's pretty expensive. I mean, even if even though it was a small little gym in Florida, it was still considerably more than I hoped to spend. But something about giving that money and being like, okay, that money's spent. I have to go or I just like threw money out the window. What are your thoughts mm -hmm. on some of that? Absolutely. I think that that's right. And when we invest in ourselves, whether it's in our health, whether it's in our business, <clears throat> it's my belief that we're actually putting a message out there that we're, we're worth it. We're worthy and deserving of spending that money on something that we really care about. And it does something different because, believe me, I don't know if you've done this, Jason, in your business, but I've done trades before. I've seen people who need help. I'm like, oh, I just, I, I know I can help you. I'm just going to give this to you. Do they get the results that my clients who pay the money to coach with me get? No, they don't get the results because they're not invested in it. So money becomes a, a symbol of investment. It's like almost sometimes not a, actually even the money itself, but just like the idea that you're investing in yourself. Um, so I absolutely agree with you on that one. Yeah. So practice. How do we get into this um, process? Let's let's get right into your your area, uh, your buzzwords that you like. Uh, how do we go? Or, if, or first of all, let's talk about practice. You define practice. We all know what practice is, but you have a special definition for it. Why don't you share that with us so we're kind of all on the same page? Yeah. So a practice, on the one hand, we know can be like doing, repeating an activity over and over again, just like we do. You know, when you're a kid, you practice basketball, you practice the piano, whatever. You practice. That's one definition of practice, is the repetition of an activity over and over again. But another definition of practice is an activity that we do in order to deepen our relationship with our true self. You know, some people have a spiritual practice. I have a spiritual practice. Um, some people meditate, whatever it might be. Another definition, I invite people to think of this other definition of practice is an activity that we do to deepen our relationship with our true self. And in doing that, what that means is that when we approach practice in this way, it's going to do a few things for us. It's going to, one, it, sometimes it's going to show us our limitations. Our practice will show us our limitations. Sometimes our practice is going to evoke insights like revelations like, oh my God, I was never aware of that. Now I'm aware of this. Thing about myself and those two things are just information so a practice also reveals information to us about who we really are when we combine those two definitions of practice the repetition of an activity with an activity that we do to understand ourselves better it becomes um, more of a personal development type of activity. So I take health and wellness, which I value very, very high, which is something that you were mentioning, um, Jason, you have to understand what your values are and are your actions aligned with your values. When you realize I value family, one of the actions that I'm not doing that's aligned with me and my responsibility to my family is taking care of myself so I can be, you know, so you've aligned those things. When we do this, um, our practice becomes, we can turn our fitness into and our fitness routines into a practice instead of just a workout. And it's something that I call the difference between a workout mentality and a practice mentality. A practice mentality means that we are now approaching our health and fitness routine as something that is going to give us more insight about ourselves and awaken us to who we really are. Sort of abstract, but it's pretty cool, actually, <laughs> when you put it into practice. I think that's fantastic. And for those of you that are just tuning in right now, we're halfway through our show with Lisa Engels, and she's helping us understand the power of practice right here on Get On Track, Stay On Track. And we're helping your small business one expert at a time. And Lisa's made the case about how fitness and small business relate so closely to each other. It's about mindset. It's about practice. It's about what are your goals and priorities and what is it that gets you up, gets you out, and gets you motivated 
to make change, those changes in your life. So I'm really excited to continue to move. We asked the Twitter question, how many times a week do you exercise? So if you're just tuning in, head on over to Twitter, use the hashtag pound on track tips and uh, let us know how many times a week do you exercise? So right now, Lisa, let's turn back to another thing that you had said that I think is fantastic. You tell a story in your uh, bio about visualizing your goals. Can you tell us that story and then explain to us what that means, visualize your goals? Um, yeah, this is a pretty cool story. You're talking about the one when I was a teenager, right? It's in high school, and I was, I was lucky enough in high school to have a progressive enough coach to know that visualization was really important. I was on the cross country, I was varsity cross country team, and um, he had us visualizing once a week our, our the last race, the conference race uh, for the season, and I visualized, visualized, I'm going to run this race in 19 minutes and 42 seconds. And long story short, came through true, the entire race went exactly as I had visualized for months and months ahead of time. I came across the finish line, the big um, sign said 1942 as I crossed it, it was like, oh my God, this stuff works. I was, I think, 15 or 16 years old. And that was the moment which I realized there is a connection between how I perform and what I'm thinking about ahead of time. So I know this isn't a new thing for most people, but what I then realized, and this becomes sort of this thing that I'm saying over and over, it's not how you visualize, it's not, or it's not actually that you're visualizing, it's not about doing certain things, it's not about visualizing, but it's about doing things in a certain way, it's more about how you visualize, it's not about the fact that you're visualizing, but it's about how you visualize, and that's become a practice over time for all areas of my life, including business and relationship and health and everything in between, like I say in my show. Um, that's a short story of it. <laughs> so what was the question? Did I answer the question? No, you no, you, you absolutely did. You told, uh, We were talking, I wanted to know about visualizing your goals, and I think that's important in any small business practice. And as I talk with my clients and I say, you know, write down your goals, define what it is that you want to do in your business as you're starting out your business strategy, your marketing strategy, and you start with, you know, a goal, and then you put out in the distance there, you put a success metric so that you can measure proximity, right? You can see how well have I succeeded, how close have I gotten to my success metric. I've taught that many times. And I think that that same idea of visualization, and why I love that, that that's the connection. We, we can see it in fitness, we can see it in time, we can see it in finances. We visualize where we want to be in X amount of time, then we then it's then it's a very clear goal that we can strive towards, we can attain. You in your running, you had a time. You said, I'm gonna meet this time. And and so in your mind, every day you're working for ways to shave a little bit off of your time, to improve this, to improve that. And every day you're able to, to click your timer and, and every test run, you're like, Okay, I'm getting closer. No, I'm not. So you can find ways to help to streamline that. And so I think visualization is so incredibly important. And I'll say one thing to visualization, because again, it's not about doing the visualization, it's about how you do it, and it's about a process. And one of the key things for me when I'm working on visualization with clients and creating a vision statement, which I do with every single client I work with, is we need to calibrate a vision to see if you're actually close enough in your own internal understanding of it to be able to achieve it. So it's so critical that you look at your vision statement and go, is this even believable to me? And how believable is it on a scale of zero to 10, where 10 is like, I absolutely know, I can without a doubt do this. You should be somewhere between an eight and a 10 in believability. If you're lingering around a five or a four, three, you're like, I would love this, but I don't believe I can do it. You have a paradigm um, conflict going on. You have your your vision, which is one paradigm, and you have your current paradigm. And when they get to here, they're going to conflict unless you're ready to jump over. So that's where the work comes in. Yeah, that that's powerful. I like what Dave Moore is saying here. He says, when we walk through a field repeatedly, we create a strong path from A to B purely through our repetition. If we stop, the path is going to get overcrone real quickly. So we need to create the path continually. So it's not just a matter of creating it, visualizing it, and setting on an autopilot now, is it? I mean, we need to constantly be reevaluating, reassessing, and that's what you're saying. You give yourself these markers so that you can, so as these things get closer and closer, you can say, is that going to happen? 
or do I need to change? Let's take this to business really quickly. Somebody says that they're going to use a Facebook page for, for marketing, right? Oh, okay, I need more likes. Well, if after three months and several hundred dollars of investing your page and you're not meeting those goals, well, maybe that, that isn't the best marketing objective for your, you know, for your small business. Maybe it's better. It's time to switch over to Pinterest or, or Twitter and not, not to go in that direction, but this is, you know, we, we are here it's to talk totally, about small business. It right? totally is exactly the same. And to just really quick add on to that point is that a vision to me, um, and I always tell all my clients this, it's a living, breathing entity. It is a part of you and it will change as you change. And that's okay. Don't get stuck to your vision that you had a year ago for yourself to be the exact same a year later because you change and it's going to change. It grows with you. Yeah. Well, so let's yeah. let's clarify these two. I think we're you know when we're using this word vision, we're using it a little. And I love that we're that we're, we're right here. I don't mind spending a little time on this because it's so important. Uh, I like that we're we've explained we've defined vision in kind of two different ways. One as an end goal, as an op, as, as like the painting on the wall, that utopian pho pho photograph of whatever it is that we want to see. And then the other one is visualizing in that we close our eyes and actually see ourselves in there. It's one thing to say, you know, I want to be able to you know live the four-hour work week so that I can ride a, a cruise ship around the Caribbean. Well, there's a picture of a cruise ship on the Caribbean, pasted on your wall. That's one thing. The other thing is to close your eyes and feel yourself on that boat and smell the air and you know what I mean? There's those two different kinds of and, and it's that process of believing that you can get to that place, that's what's gonna help you actually get to that place. And the same thing now in fitness. You know, when I was had my fitness coach, my personal trainer, when I first started out and we did my my measurements, my taping, ugh, wow. <laughs> That was really not a happy moment for me. But what was a happy moment for me was a couple weeks later when I started to see some real change. And I was like, wow, this is working. This is, and, and, and so it was important to have those pieces because that's what drove me to want to work even harder and even harder because I was like, wow, you know, the pant size is going down. The waist is getting smaller. I can stretch a little better. Yeah, Absolutely. So we've got a lot of questions from our audience here, and I'm going to, you know, as we, we've got just a few more minutes to wrap up, I always love bringing these questions in. So um, let's bring in a, a couple here in no real particular order. Dustin W. Stout, he says, so true, Lisa Engels, everybody needs a coach to shine light onto the things that we are blind to. And if anybody knows Dustin, he's a fantastic creative coach. In fact, he's got a product that's going out real quickly. If anybody needs help with creativity, look up Dustin. Um, Paul Steinbrook, another good friend of ours, he says, I think it helps to either make sure we're doing the type of exercise we do or enjoy, like a sport, or do something we enjoy at the same time, like listen to music, podcast, do it socially with others. So let, let's, let's talk about that. How can I, if I'm not somebody that likes to work out, you know, but I, but I know I have to do it. I've already determined that my kids need a dad, and then dad needs to be healthy, and I gotta get there. And I make myself there, and I'm at the gym. But I tell you what, I'm just not there. What what yeah. kinds of things do you teach your clients that, Again, that get to this place? It's not about doing certain things. It's about doing things in a certain way. So this becomes the difference between having a workout mentality and a practice mentality. A workout mentality is I freaking hate being at the gym, but I'm gonna do it anyways is really setting yourself up for failure <laughs> versus having a practice mentality and knowing this is a journey. It's not about necessarily, there is a destination, but this is a big, long journey. It's a process. And in this process, there's going to be some self-discovery. And along the way, I'm committed to having some insights about myself so that I can be a better person, not just so that I can fit into my skinny jeans and look hot when I'm 45. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's it. You know, um, it's, it's a whole mindset shift. So, so the just doing it even though I don't want to be here, that means you have some work to do, buddy. That means you need to start looking inside yourself and going, hmm, that, again, how you show up at the gym, at, at the track on the treadmill is how you're going to show up in your business. You really want to investigate those excuses that you're coming up with and those resistances. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as, as we're wrapping it up here a little bit, um, there was one more, uh, Vivica, and you, you just have to forgive me, uh, 
Vivekananda that I am just not very good with names, but he, he was excited to find out that, that you play tabla. He yes. said it's, it's one of his favorite instruments. Um, here, where is it? He, here it is. Yeah, he said, did you say Lee Sangle plays the Indian tabla? Wow, I love the tabla, and I learned it for years. So maybe <laughs> Nice, nice. Yeah, well, we can get together and chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely love Indian music, classical Indian there are yep. so many fantastic comments here from you guys. I mean, Dave Moore, always lighting it up, as usual. I know, I love such, Dave. Right? I mean, if guys, if you don't have Dave Moore circled, get him circled. Get Not him just circled. For the sake of get him circled. I mean, the guy has just a, just a font of wonderful knowledge and inspiration and encouragement. And uh, we had him on the On Track Tips show earlier. Go and look at some of our archives and you'll find his interview. Dave, anyway, he says, we live in such close proximity with ourselves, we cannot see anything from an external perspective. And when we have somebody who can look objectively at us, we learn even more about ourselves from their feedback. And not just negative stuff, but positive stuff, too. Yep. You know? Yeah. As long, as long as it's not your wife and you're not answering the question, how <laughs> does this dress look on me, right? It's not the time to go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lisa, I had so much fun today. I really yeah, had a great time. Yeah, that was by. great. I hope I was able to give some some good tips here. A absolutely. And I see in your lower third there uh, where we can find you. And I know there's a description in the sidebar. We also had an offer uh, for your book. There's a link over there in the sidebar for your book if you want to head on over there uh, on Track Tips audience. But, Lisa, tell us, where can people find you and connect with you after this uh, interview and podcast? Sure. You can connect with me at um, right below my little um, lower third here at innerstatecoaching.com or you can email me directly at lisa at innerstatecoaching.com. That's the easiest way to get a hold of me. And for our podcast listeners, that's inner spelled I-N-N-E-R state. Uh -huh. And uh, Lisa, thank you so much. And this is, you're listening to Get On Track, Stay On Track, uh, helping your small business one expert at a time. And this week our expert is Lisa Engels, and she helped us to understand the power of practice. So get out there and practice and uh, increase your power. Get your fitness in order, helping you budget your life, your time, your fitness. And then next week we're going to be talking about budget your finances, so I hope to see you there. Head on over to OnTrackTips.com, look for the big red button, and push it. And we're going to be in contact. We'll make sure to let you know when the next time we're going to have this show. Say goodbye to our expert this week, Lisa. Bye. Bye Thanks, now. Jason. Yeah.